Hello and welcome to Self Care Tips. Once again, I am Irene Jaroge, and we're going to talk about the importance of being fresh, personal care, and grooming. These are things that cannot be overstated because, in order for you to feel confident all day long, in order for you to walk around feeling like you're at your best, we you need to also have taken care of yourself. Generally, soap and water is all you need to keep yourself fresh. Warm water is ideal for bathing, but you can also use cold water because it gives you a fresh, perked up feeling. And immediately after, you follow up with moisturizer. It's very important to apply moisturizer onto wet skin because this helps to seal in the much needed moisture and it helps it to stay all day long. There are several ways that you can control body odor and this is something that really has to be addressed. One of the most obvious is of course to bath every single day. Another one is to avoid wearing stale clothes. When you wear stale clothes the new sweat mingles with the old sweat and this creates a musty odor that is difficult to control. Once you've bathed there are things you can use to keep yourself going. Body washes are very helpful Instead of using soap, once in a while you can introduce a body wash into your regime. Body wash should always be followed by the use of a body splash. This is a splash that is spread all over the body. It invigorates the whole body, keeping you fresh, keeping you feeling great at all times. We cannot leave out antiperspirants or, as popularly known, roll-ons. These are useful for using on the armpits and they help in controlling sweat. On other days, you can just get away with nice perfume or of course good old body splash by all means indulge in some of these things these are the little luxuries that make life very interesting and make it more enjoyable this has been self-care tips on how to keep yourself fresh all day long and how to be confident i am irene jaroge the country's economy once they form the next government.
The Deputy President led his Kenya Kwanza team on Thursday in a series of meetings in Makweni County. Ruto would locals to support his bid, saying he had a solid agenda for Kenya. The DP and the team promised to take Kenya through a path of economic reawakening, terming the bottom-up approach as the way to go. They will not distract us. They will not engage us in side shows. The contest this year is about the economy and how the economy needs to be changed not to be held hostage yule ambayo kuna silver bullet ni wewe na mimi kwa kura yetu tarehe 9 mwezi wa 8 tutoe silver bullet tuingize william samoy ruto na serikali ya kenya kwanza Earlier in the day, the deputy president met officials from the European Union where he promised to scale up the war against corruption. We are very strong believers that uh, government is not just those who win. It is also those who keep government in check. That's what constitutes a working government. Ruto has, in the meantime, pulled out of a planned presidential debate, citing what he termed as media bias in the coverage of political events. I want to tell the people of Kenya to treat with contempt the propaganda being propagated by some of our staff, that there is any intelligent report that says our competitors are ahead of us. In fact, the intelligence report that our NSIS have released is that Kenya Kwanzaa is ahead by eight percentage points against our competitors. Basi. Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission IBC Chair Wafula Chabukati has assured Kenyans that the August 9th general election will be free, fair and credible. Chabukati was speaking at Bombers of Kenya during the registration of presidential aspirants. He affirmed that no data has been lost from IBC servers calling on Kenyans to ignore any speculations of transfer of voters. The Independent Electoral and Bounties Commission has called for calm, affirming its commitment to uphold the integrity of the August 9th general election. <laughs> IBC chairperson Wafula Chebukati says the process has begun with the ongoing verification of the voter register. Chebukati says the register will be available on or before 9th June. Seven days before election, every polling station shall have a printout of the register for that polling uh, st station. So with all these processes, it's a transparent process. Uh, anybody will be able to check where they are voting. And let's stop this speculation about uh, the register. The presidential registration process does the end the stand day at the Bombers of Kenya. Gibson Garuya Nanga was disqualified after only presenting signatures from two counties out of the required 24. The certificate, I was among the first people who turned there fully certified or, or rather signed document or risk from 24 counties. <laughs> Others who were disqualified included Dorothy Kemundo and James Kamau who had insufficient signatures. We have a register which we build on the register for 2017 elections, 19.6. We did uh, ECVR 1 and 2, and we have a register of 22.5 million plus, which is undergoing audit. And the audit report will be made public on or before the register is gazetted on the 9th of June this month. Meanwhile, Roots Party aspirant George Wajakoya has been cleared by IBC to seek the presidency. Wajakoya now joins Walter Mongare in the list of cleared aspirants. And we are going to follow the law, we are going to abide by the law. We shall be asking our followers not to hurl abuses at other campaign presidential candidates. 
and uh, the rest will be told. And with these few words, I will again want to say thank you very much. You no know, presidency is not just about legislation and re regulations. We are supposed to change the mindset of our people, attitude of our people. And that is why we are here today, having received this certificate and encouraging the Kenyans out there who are unemployed, who live below the poverty line, that this certificate is yours and we are reflecting the challenges we are facing. The exercise is set to continue on Friday with three more aspirants, David Maure Wahiga, Jeremiah Nyaga and Jane Munyeki set to appear before the commission. As the number of presidential aspirants continues to narrow down, IBC Chair of Fulati Bukati has assured Kenyans of a free, fair and credible election come August the 9th. This is despite speculations of illegal transfer of voters by the commission. Uh, reporting for Prime Edition from the Bombers of Kenya in Nairobi, my name is Frederick Mwoki. Women leaders have faulted the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission on the mandatory sharing of their campaign schedules, saying it is likely to expose them to gender-based violence. The women leaders say the information might be used by their political rivals to trail them owing to their vulnerability. The women have at the same time called on the electoral to vote in women, saying they are better managers. Run with God's help and win. Amen. Women candidates vying for different elective positions in the country have received a boost after receiving campaign merchandise from Eco Network, Democracy Trust Fund, and UN Women. These are women whom we have worked with for a long time, training them and encouraging them to offer themselves. Speaking after receiving the goodies, the women decried of a rough reception while on their campaign trail citing gender-based violence as a key impediment. We've seen women whose videos are circulating on their sexuality, but we have not seen men's video circulating on sexuality. Kwa mfano kwa na wanaaki wa kutosha bungeni, kuangazia masala ya watoto kukosa lishabora, kukosa nafasi ya kunyonyesho na mamazao wakiwa katika kazini. The women argue that two-thirds gender rule principle will only be realized if there is political goodwill from all spheres. It's not done yet. There are so many things that we can do together with women. The challenges I face in the ground is because sometimes people are thinking people with disabilities do not make it. They think that we do not deliver. At the same time, the women have called on the CS Ministry of Interior, Dr. Fred Matiangi, to provide security for women and protect them from hooliganism. Ruth Wamboy for Prime Edition. Parliament has adopted amendment to House Standing Order Number 20, seeking to protest to protect House leadership and committee chairs from abrupt and unprocedural removal from office by political parties or party leaders. In what appears to be a move to cure recent de-whipping of some rebel House leadership, MPs lawmakers say the move will enhance the independence of the House and further streamline parliamentary business. In a legislative rebuttal of tendencies by political party and party leaders to kick out those deemed to be rebel lawmakers from the parliamentary leadership positions, MPs have adopted a new proposal in the House standing orders. As many as what opinions say aye. aye. As many of contrary opinions say nay. I'm talking as a victim. Up to today, there are certain signatures I am yet to see, but of course when my book comes out, Mr. Speaker, I'm talking about that period, people will say, but we must protect the future leaders. It might not be me, it might be somebody else, but a due process in law, that even the Speaker, even how we submit the list to the Speaker, the minutes, the signatures, must be documented in our standard I support. The removal, for instance, of the Honorable Aden Duale as leader of majority was extremely unprocedural. There was no party caucus that sat anywhere, not a parliamentary group meeting. 
not any party organ, Honorable Speaker, that sat to even listen to accusations against the Honorable Duale, and he served diligently. The proposal provides for the right of reply before those alleged to go against the party stand are kicked out of House leadership positions. The proposal by Garissa Township Member of Parliament, Aiden Duale, to amend Standing Orders Number 20 provides for appearance before a disciplinary party caucus, presentation of minutes and signatures for removal before the whipping of those in the House and committee leadership. The lawmakers claim the move will streamline parliamentary operations and disabuse the notion that parliament is an extension of the executive. Mr. Speaker, this does not just streamline the workings of this house, but it also enhances our democracy. Democracy is an institution, Mr. Speaker, other than democracy that is based on the whims of party leaders, Mr. Speaker. I support because, Mr. Speaker, this diminishes the politics of hero worshipping and personality cults, and especially of party leaders. MPs have also increased public appointment approval period from 14 to 21 days to ensure scrutiny of those appointed to public offices. The proposal stem from ejections by Jubilee and ODM MPs from the Plum House Committee positions in what was termed as party realignments. Let's take a break, but when we come back, Young and Industrious with more business stories for you. Gari <laughs> Our arts and entertainment industry has evolved over the years. It is at such times that our destinies are written. Will you rise up in courage or die in cowardice? Who are the movers and shakers in film and theatre? Get trendy as we review locally produced films and stage drama every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on cinemas and theatre. Brought to you by the Kenya Film Commission. Film Kenya. Capture Africa. Welcome back. It's now time for business. The government should step up public engagements in every stage of the budget-making process to make it more inclusive and improve transparency. To improve budget transparency, the Institute of Public Finance Chief Executive Officer James Muragui says Kenya should publish media budget reviews online and detailed information about their actual outcomes for expenditures. The budget-making process in Kenya commences in August every year. By this time, the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary is required to issue to all national government entities a circular setting out guidelines for the budget process that includes key dates, public participation procedures, projections of revenues and expenditures of published documents increases trust in the process and expenditure of public funds. But in 2017, we had scored 46. So we've remained the same 
position, and this indicates that we, spare, you know, we did not provide, as a country, we did not provide adequate information uh, to support informed public uh, debate. According to the 2021 Open Budget Survey, even though Kenya has a slightly improved public participation and oversight in the budget-making process, broader accountability system and public engagement remains as the weakest link. It is not that there are no spaces uh, sometimes, sometimes even legally, for public participation. Is that these spaces are not actualized, is that these spaces are not open to the widest public. Uh, in other words, they may be there, but they are closed. They are only known uh, by a very few. In Kenya, for instance, uh, this happens only at the national level. While calling for more innovative approaches to encourage citizens' feedback and public participation, the Institute of Public Finance CEO James Muragori said Kenya is still grappling with its own unaccounted budgetary measures and policies made during the COVID-19 period. Initiative led by the National Treasury is called zero. They did not give us any opportunity to discuss the budget as it was being impro- uh, implemented. Open budgets uh, is still not only a winning proposition, but the way to go. And what, what is clear is that even during the pandemic, the countries where people were able to engage and have more meaningful conversations around their budgets are those that were already uh, open. They said fiscal accountability should be prioritized. Caroline Jinga for Prime Edition. After financial constraints derailed Eric Karuki from college in 2013, where he was studying a course in accountancy, the then 23-year-old took up a menial job at a fabrics business in Gikomba Market. Two years later, Karuki borrowed 70,000 shillings from a sacco as seed capital for a furniture business. Yusufar visited Karuki's Fairview Furnitures in Nairobi, Ngara area and filed the following report on Karaoke's 10-year entrepreneurial journey. Fairview Furnitures in Gara, Nairobi. And uh, this and four beds. This showroom plays host to the business enterprise owned by 33-year-old Eric Karaoke. Inside, he shows me a variety of the products the business churns out to the market. <coughs> Just a few design. Karaoke's journey to this present enterprise kicked off in 2015 when he secured a 70,000 shilling loan from a sucko. At the time, he had set up shop in Desai Road. Business was booming. In April 2020, tragedy struck, forcing him out of the business for a while. When you're into business, you uh, can make it in life. So what they did, uh, there was a sabotage nilikuja nikachomewa my furniture kila kitu yangu ilichomeka and um, i had so many orders the clients so i had to pay them back eh? ile mna agree na customer give me a certain duration of time nifanye hizi vitu zako nikutengeneze tena when he reorganized himself and was back on his feet again he opted for a new business location hapa ndio nilikuja nikaanza Kunikafungua showroom, nikasema sasa, cause I have uh, clients wa high end. So hata wakikuja hapa hivi, wataona kuna mali uh, decent, mali pazuri wanaweza kuja waone vitu zao, ama waone vitu zenye huwa ninatengeneza. The move to this location in September 2020 was a blessing in disguise. Business took an upward trajectory. <laughs> Not far from his office is the workshop where his employees are immersed in their art, trying to beat deadlines or orders. Kariuki is a hands-on boss. He has, however, had to deal with a few challenges in his entrepreneurial endeavor. To get a financier, it's very hard eh? as a young person, because most of the banks want to know what to do. So, kama huna Taito Mahali, Hauna Logbook Mahali, to access a business loan in Akua very hard. Eh? It has been very hard to get those fundies that you may trust. Hata kama hauko, unajua kazi naendelea. So, unapata, you must be there. Because see what water wanajituma. Maybe client alikuja kachagua a certain fabric, umeenda ukapata haiko. So, before now you convince that client 
to take a different uh, fabric <laughs> or a different texture or a color inakuwa very hard and sometimes unapata ume lose your biashara juu ya kitu kidogo Resilience coupled with passion for client satisfaction propelled the young man's dream this far. Thanks to Kiryuki's idea, his seven employees are comfortably fending for their families at Fairview Furnitures. At least I went back to school ni maza kulipa shule. I'm in the process ya kubalizia shule. Ni maza kukimu at least for my sister, my family. Ni makuwa nikifanya upkeep through your business. So, ni makuwa very helpful kwa angu. Ni maza naishi, na jilipia rent. Kulingana na hii kazi tunafanya ya furniture chakula mimi ndo najitegemea kulingana na hii kazi yangu ya furniture I'm able to educate my children through this job tunaishi through this job What is the vision for Fairview Furnitures Naona mtanipata nikiwa na showroom kubwa yenye ina showcase kila kitu ile ya pick and go haitakuwa ati anangoja juu hakuna space ya kushowcase zile vitu ama ha, hakuna vitu za kununua za pick and go. Eh, so na hizo zote zitakuwa locally made. Eh, koza, nalilia vijana. Fairview Furnitures has been able to employ seven pairs of hands to help with the smooth run of the business, but the young entrepreneur is not quite done yet. He hopes as the business continues to make strides, he will be able to employ more youth and in his own little way fix the youth unemployment rate in the country. Yusufar reporting for Young in Industries from Gara, Nairobi County. What an inspiring story, a classical example of when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Now, Kenya's housing crisis is getting worse due to the low investment, especially among the low-income earners. Habitat for Humanity says the situation is compounded by the growing rural urban migration, where close to 50% of Kenyans live in urban areas. Habitat says it will partner with the private and public sector to help in the construction of affordable houses, especially targeting vulnerable groups. Despite the government's effort to construct thousands of affordable houses in various parts of the country, the housing crisis remains a major challenge for most Kenyans. Housing demand in the country stands at close to 500,000 units every year, but the market only supplies less than 10% of the annual needs. In 2018, the government launched the Big Four agenda, targeting the construction of 500,000 units every year. However, five years later, the program has managed to deliver less than 50,000 units. Habitat for Humanity has partnered with Kenya Commercial Bank Foundation to help in the construction of affordable houses targeting the vulnerable groups in the country. Through the partnership, KCB Foundation will also help 350 youths to acquire technical skills and later link them to the job market. So the 350 youths that uh, we have identified under this program We'll work together with the um, uh, Habitat for Humanity Kenya um, to identify. Um, as I said, unemployment for the youth is quite high, so we try to make sure that the requirements are almost, um, you know, anybody, as long as you are youth. So you have to be between the age of 18 to 35. The foundation has partnered with various vocational training institutes to help young people acquire technical skills. And from there we work with local TVETs, uh, which we have already onboarded, and we will put them in class. We'll take care of uh, scholarship. Uh, on top of that, they will get industrial attachment um, into the various um, um, schemes that they get into. Habitat for Humanity Kenya Chair Frank Kireri has said the construction of 100 houses targeting the vulnerable will be executed in a period of five years. Uh, within this MOU partnership, there's at least 20 houses a year for the next five years. Yeah, years. Organizations continue to ink partnership in a name to curb unemployment rate and give back to the vulnerable in the society. For Prime Edition, I am Teresa Mutai. 
An electronic manufacturer is urging content creators to embrace upskilling and certification to sharpen their skills. An appeal to global digital content needs. Canon Marketing Director Amin Judah says the world shifts from DSLR to mirrorless cameras matching the right IT equipment with user needs is essential for optimum results. And the beginning, really, of the R Tour launch. There we have it. A round of Kenya is among the fastest growing markets for content creators, with over 400 Kenyan YouTube channels having over 100,000 subscribers each. With a 60% increase in content creators earning over 1 million shillings on such platforms within the last year. According to IT product developer Canon, the content share does not necessarily match up to their counterparts in developed countries. Whether you are producing a very specific high-end product like food or interior design or studio, as well as if you are just an amateur who is producing a daily life routine or just something to be used in social media. It's because the market demands that and everybody is getting better. So because the competition there is higher, so that it makes, it makes them behave in that way. They say amateur content creators foraging into the trade by equipment based on popularity instead of basing their decisions on their content needs. Amin says product developers should make their gadgets more user-friendly to appeal to the young generations who often resort to using mobile phones to create content. That content can be associated to a need which is already existing or it doesn't exist. But the only thing you will see an added value and a change in your routine and that's where you feel that this device is made for me. For digital creators still new to the scene, the sector can be quite daunting. But product developers insist a study tool for success is good equipment. Hibak Said for Prime Edition. Boresha maisha na bima. Kifo ni lazima. Japo haitabiriki. Pata bima ya matanga ili kuepuka wasiwasi wa michango isiyo na maana unapompoteza mpendo wa wako. Bima hii husimamia gharama zinazohusiana na matanga. Pata bima ili kuhakikisha yote yatakuwa sawa. you don't mix your personal issues with work. I thought your father taught you better. Did he? Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Kupata lazima nishike kama sikiza tune yako. Bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash. Lazima nishike mapema. Na sasa hivi ushika hesabu mapema utakaasirika. Una chao mimi nikiwa moto wa marathon na kwa niko na experience kabisa. Niko na experience. If you don't hurry, you will not break the record. Okay, watch and shake hesabu. Kupata lazima nishike bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash star 811 star 962 hash
Top Sports Attractions on KBC Channel 1. In July, Kenya Morans face off against the DRC, Egypt and Senegal in the FIBA Basketball World Cup African Qualifiers in Alexandria, Egypt from 1st to 3rd of July 2022. Also in July, Kenya plays South Africa in Rugby League Test Matches in Nairobi with a return fixture set for October. Still in July, watch the World Athletic Championships from 15th to 24th July Live from Oregon, USA, as Kenyan athletes seek glory. Followed by the 22nd Commonwealth Games from 28th July to 8th August, live from Birmingham, England. In August, join our coverage of the World Athletics Under-20 Championships from the 1st to 6th of August 2022 from Cali, Colombia. Then, in November, catch the World Half Marathon Championships on 13th November from Yangzhou, China. Now that's what sets us apart as KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Welcome back. Now, the 9,400-acre Elngwesi Conservancy in Laikipia is among the few rhino sanctuaries in Kenya owned by the community. Tonight on Magical Scenes, Irene Muchuma Odim highlights attractions in Ngwesi. Welcome to Elingwesi Conservancy in Lake Ipia County. Elingwesi, meaning people of wildlife in the local dialect, is a home to, among other wildlife, the grazy zebras, wild dogs, as well as the white and black rhinos. A black rhino was recently reintroduced at the Conservancy, offering you one more reason to visit this destination. El Nguese is among the few rhino sanctuaries in the country owned by the community. The Lake Paik Masai community owns this El Nguese Conservancy. Growing up in this land, this particular area, which is the lower land of the Conservancy, used to be a battle zone. Um, whoever who came here, you had to be ready. But now, because we've, the, we've got the security personnel who are trained and by the government, uh, anyone in the community can sleep peacefully without worrying about insecurity. Repeat visitors to Elingwesi are said to prefer to spot the black rhino during their game drive at the Conservancy owing to its beauty. The black rhino is unique and scarce and one would be privileged to spot one. So for us, what that means, it means a lot because it means improved security, it means uh, more tourism will come in, uh, which means more, uh, more revenue will come in. And um, Ilingwesi has just recently, you know, uh, started that journey of bringing the rhinos back. And as soon as we decided to do that, we've seen investors and different kind of clients coming in. It's pretty hard to find uh, wild dogs nowadays, and Ilingwesi is one of the places that at least we report them once in a month. Budding is also an attraction. You would spot a number of migratory birds at the Conservancy. The community has put up stay-in facilities to make your visit worth your time. The structures are constructed from local materials and its open-air design allows panoramic views. Irene Mchuma Odim, medical scenes in the county of Lake Ipia.
It is now possible for one to access a critical illness insurance cover that allows one to seek treatment at a facility of their choice locally or internationally. Pauli Bank Managing Director Apollo Njoroge says the new cover will target, among other finance treatment for cancer, open heart surgery, open heart surgery multiple sclerosis, motor neurostroke, and dementia. Details of this and other stories from the corporate scene. Illness insurance is one kind of health insurance that is gradually gaining traction locally owing to its flexibility in reducing the financial burden of patients with high medical costs, whether in short term or a longer length of time. The cover allows one to seek treatment at a facility of choice locally or internationally. All ailments, we are talking about uh, diseases like, like, these are like heart diseases, we're talking about uh, cancer, we're talking about Alzheimer's disease, we're talking about these this very unique uh, ailments that actually are very common in our society. And we have to begin to ask ourselves, in the event that this happens, we don't want our customers and we don't want you to be in a situation where you're not able to afford the medical care. Meanwhile, the government, in partnership with local apparel makers, has rolled out the Changamka Shopping Festival in Mombasa, offering coast residents an opportunity to buy export quality products at discounted rates. Manufacturers are urging ESC residents to buy more locally made products to grow the region's economies. Just support us all and let's all work together, shoulder to shoulder, and we'll see, we know, we'll, we'll see ourselves in the big, big first part of the agenda. And we also hope the next government coming in, the fifth government, will also be making sure that cost of manufacturing is brought down. Elsewhere, Cooperative Bank of Kenya has scooped the East Africa's Regional Bank of the Year Award at the African Banker Awards 2022 held in Ghana for overall excellence in banking in the region. Africa, Africa, oh, Africa. The 16th edition of the African Banker Awards Gala Ceremony was held under the high patronage of the African Development Bank. Over 300 banking and financial services professionals joined the gala ceremony to discover the winners of the African Banker Awards 2022. And the government has rolled out training of local producers on opportunities in the Democratic Republic of Congo in efforts to boost exports to the new EAC member that has a market of over 90 million people. The government is also addressing challenges faced by Kenyan producers exporting to the DRC market. If we enhance our efforts, then uh, we'll be able again also to capture additional uh, market share in the global market. Finally, crop nutrition company Yara East Africa has embarked on a capacity building exercise targeting coffee farmers in Kiambu County to boost productivity. The training involves soil testing, best farming practice and use of appropriate fertilizer. Hiyo fertilizer ukipanga system vile wanakufunza hasa nisema ya kwamba kahoi inabadilika one majani inabadilika pili ukija gera zaidi za begu berries zinakuwa strong big na bado zinakuwa napoiva haivi manusu manusu Regina Manya reporting for Prime Edition Kenya capsicum chili exports to Europe are expected to increase significantly this year after the EU certified Kenya's pest control efforts. The Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service says Kenya has contained the false coding moth pest and expects the EU to allow more consignments of capsicum and chili in the markets. Kenya capsicum and chili value chain players are asking the EU to lower the sampling rate of Kenya capsicum and chili consignments after successful containing the false codling moth pest. In that part of the country, the world. So it, the good news is that at least we are not so much on, on, on the rates that we were. We are praying that we will see zero so that these uh, quarantine challenges are faced out of us and then we are removed out of the Rala where we have been seen as an uncompliant country. The Fresh Produce Consortium says interception of chili and capsicum consignment from Kenya have significantly reduced as Kenya seeks to gain a foothold in Europe. There will be more stringent inspection for new consignment. So I'm seeing a reduced inspection. Uh, I'm seeing a reduced inspection uh, following the good report from the EU. 
The Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service says the EU is satisfied with Kenyan efforts to control the pest. Our visit to EU, we demonstrated that the systems we have put in place have been able to reduce the number of uh, FCM in capsicums from 16 to 4. And for that reason, the EU was able to conclude the audit query which they had. Talks between Kenya and Saudi Arabia about fresh produce exports are ongoing in a bid to reduce the number of agents handling Kenyan imports in the Gulf nation. Consignments to Saudi Arabia are handled by three agents, with exporters incurring up to $500 in additional cost per consignment. Because it's just a simple consignment, somebody could ask you for between $100 and $500 extra because of the agents. And because also agents must get their, they must get their money and agency fee. Ben Sondroba reporting for Prime. Edition. Well, now time to change gear. It's now spot time for spots with Munga. Well, thank you very much, Cynthia and Yamai, for that. And, well, I'm Richard Munga once again. And now let's get uh, sports underway tonight. And top on the KBC Sports Update tonight, newly crowned African champions, that is Kenya Komashi Bank women's volleyball team, arrived back home today morning after their grand outing in Kalibia, that is in Tunisia. The Lionesses, who dominated the competition's awards, stunned record holders are likely by three sets to one to win the Continental Showpiece for the first time in 16 years. Kenya Commercial Bank women's volleyball team put up a brave fight to lift the Continental Trophy after humbling defending champions Al Ahli of Egypt in a tough final. KCB Group CEO Paul Rosso said they are proud of the team and the bank will continue to support talented youth in different sports disciplines. The club won six out of the seven matches at the two-week championship which featured 16 teams. Right attacker Sharon Chepchumba was named most valuable player. Masi Moim scooped the best receiver accolade while Edith Wissa was named the best blocker. I didn't uh, have Zile Vitu Zayin Zili Kwazina for a professional player and uh, I'm very sure by now at least I know what it takes for me to be a professional player. Tunisia has given us a lot of courage because we have beaten, we have beaten all those teams that are rivals here in Kenya. We beat Kenya Prison at the quarterfinals, then we beat Pipeline at the semifinals. So that gives us the edge ahead of them. So we are optimistic that when the, the playoffs come, we are going to be number one. The team will be back in action later this month for the sixth leg of the Kenya Volleyball Federation League. Now, meanwhile, over a thousand runners are expected uh, to take part in this year's edition of Nandi Road Race, which will be held on Sunday, July 3rd at the Nandi Forest, uh, Nandi County. So far, 800 athletes, including 550 male and 250 female, have enlisted uh, for the race. Meanwhile, the organizers of the race received a shot in the arm after betting firm Mozart Bet announced the 3 million shillings sponsorship of this year's edition. Uh, the year's rediscovery Nandi Road Race 10 km launch today has the primary objective of environmental conservation and restoration of the country's shrinking water towers and wetlands. A tree planting exercise will precede the race on Saturday, 2nd July. Uh, for the last uh, almost uh, five years, we have been doing around 7.2%. But I want to say that uh, because of the efforts that uh, the government of Kenya through the Ministry of Environment and many stakeholders, we are now moving, uh, I think we are currently we are about 8.8 percent. This event brings together all the tea estates in Nandi County for a stakeholders engagement and the tree planting exercise through an initiative themed Nandi Forest Cover Champions. Each of the participating athletes will be provided with tree seedlings to plant as part of measures to mitigate climate change. Those people who started the first edition up to now, from that we have actually seen uh, so many talents being discovered. Mozart Bet also promised to continue supporting sports team with equipment all over the country with over 1,000 athletes expected to show interest in the event with an intended increase in prize money from 80,000 shillings to 100,000 shillings if an increase in sponsorship is realized. It's also very good when we are supporting uh, sports for a cause and this time we are supporting sports uh, for, for, for a cause and the cause is uh, conservation of uh, the environment. The race will be flagged off from Nandi Forest. 
Well, that's all the time we have for sports, but just an update. Uh, Dan Sikuta uh, will captain the National 15's rugby team, that is Simbas, against South Africa's Leopards in the Curry Cup, our uh, first division encounter that will be held uh, this coming Saturday. Well, I'm Richard Munga. Don't go too fast. And then your mind is on the other side of the studio. Of course, as she introduces the NAROC uh, gubernatorial uh, debate uh, coming up in a few. Cynthia. Yes, this debates have been quite interesting and today we take you all the way to Narok where I do know Nancy Okwara is on the other side waiting for you. I just want to find out from my director if we can go live. Okay, that will come up later. They are talking to the candidates. But after the break, do not go anywhere. After the break, the debate starts. From me and the rest of the team, I do want to wish you a good night. Pili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he is able to take you to a place of abundance he is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ Kipindi ni neno la neema ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose Judah, my trust.